morning, Sanctuary family. My name is Micah Morgan, and it is such a gift to be able to share another week with you in our virtual worship service. For those of you who don't know who we are, Sanctuary Columbus is a multi-ethnic church that is transformed by Jesus and united in service. We want to welcome all of our first-time visitors and guests. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, we invite you to head over to our website, SanctuaryColumbus.com, and fill out our digital connection card. Once you fill out that card, someone from our Connections team will reach out to you soon. Now, whether you've been worshiping with us for a few days or a few years, we want to see how you, yes you, are worshiping with us in your homes. So whether you're in your dining rooms or your living rooms, please go ahead and take a picture, post it to your social media account using the hashtag SCC everywhere, and we'll look forward to seeing all of your posts and pictures. Now. Let's go ahead and join our worship team and lift Jesus together in song. our worship team for offering us some worship this week. It's such a gift to be able to worship together. 
Now for some things to keep in mind as we move forward this week. Thank you for all of your faithfulness in giving. We want to remind you that you're welcome to give on our website and on your smartphones using the app, the Tithely app. Now don't forget to use the benevolence option in, in case you want to give directly to our COVID-19 relief fund. Sanctuary groups are a great way to stay connected with your church family on a smaller scale throughout the week. And we're excited to announce that we actually have two new sanctuary groups forming. So if you're not connected with us and you want to get involved, please fill out the digital connection card and we'll look forward to connecting with you. And now for some more good news. Sanctuary has finally found our church administrator, Caitlin Steinbrecher. We're so excited to have her join us and she's quickly learning all of our systems and our structure so that she'll be able to provide the support that we need. So if you need to contact her, her email is caitlin.steinbrecher at sanctuarycolumbus.com. Welcome, Caitlin. There are two new opportunities to engage in prayer during the week. On Wednesdays, we have our midday prayer at 12.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. And on Sundays, we have a Sunday night prayer Zoom call at 8 p.m. You can get the information for that call from the announcement graphic in this video, and it's also in our weekly emails. This week, we wanna say a special prayer for our non-medical essential personnel who are working outside of their homes every day during the COVID-19 shelter in place. These include grocery store workers, sanitation workers, technicians, farmers, and others who aren't in the medical field, but they still have to leave their homes every day during the shelter in place order. So I invite you, will you join me in prayer for them? Lord, I sit here and I'm aware of all the things that need to come together in order for us to have the things that we need. All the people who have to leave their homes to go work at restaurants, at the grocery stores, all the people who are working to make sure we stay connected, that our cell phone towers are still working, Lord, all of these people who are risking their health to make sure that we have what we need, and I thank you for them. Lord, I pray a prayer of protection over them, over their families. I pray a sense of peace, Lord. I pray a sense of courage as they leave their homes. Lord, would you give them ways to, to recharge and to be aware of, of your strength and your protection when anxiety might overtake them at certain moments, Lord. Lord, I thank you for, for the ways that you are working even during this shutdown that, that maybe we don't notice and we, and we can't see in the moment. But Lord, I know that you are good and I know that you are still at work. We pray this prayer in your son's precious name. Amen. And now for this week's sermon given by our very own Andrew Jenkins. Good morning, Sanctuary Columbus. Uh, my name is Andrew Jenkins, and I'm so excited to get to be with you this morning and get to share the word with you. If you don't know who I am, my wife Naomi and I have been a part of Sanctuary for a little over a year now, and we are so excited to get to be a part of a multi-ethnic church that is being transformed by Jesus and united in service to our city. When we came to Sanctuary, we saw that it was the type of church that we would want to raise our kids in. And this past year, we were blessed with a little boy named Samuel, who's four months old now. And so it has been a joy for us to be a part of Sanctuary. If we do not know you, please, uh, we'd love to meet you and connect with you uh, as soon as we can. So today, we're continuing our sermon series, Back to Life. And in the Back to Life series, we are looking at and seeing how the resurrection of Jesus impacts our everyday life. And, you know, the last few weeks, the last month or so, we've probably more so, if you're anything like me, been thinking, I just want to think about going back to normal life, life before COVID-19. And our lives have been shifted and changed a lot because of COVID-19. And so one of those things that has been changed or shifted for all of us is the way that we interact with and carry out our work and our responsibilities. And so whether it's, you know, your job or it's the responsibilities that you hold to yourself or one another or the responsibility of being a disciple maker for the kingdom of God, 
all of those things have been changed and impacted in some way. And so today, I want us to talk about and look at how we can work as a work of God. Our passage for this morning will come from the book of Ephesians. We'll be in chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And so if you have the, a Bible with you or a, a, a type of device that can uh, look up the scripture, I'd invite you to join me there. And so I'm going to pray and then read our scripture. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the opportunity to connect virtually, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can always connect with you through your spirit and your word. God, I pray that you would speak through me. I pray you would anoint the message on my lips and that you would transform your people to be made more like you. God, we love you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says this. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Again, I'll read verse 10. This is our key verse, our theme verse for today. It says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We see here, and what we will unpack today is that our work or our responsibility flows from being made a workmanship or another way to think about that is we are God's masterpiece. We are God's poem. We are God's work. We are a work of God. That our work and responsibility flows from being made a work of God through the perfect work of Jesus Christ. Due to COVID-19, and it just feels like the course of this world has been totally altered. It feels like things in, on every level have changed. And our jobs and responsibilities have not been uh, exempt from those changes. If you, any, any of us, probably fall into one of these four categories for how your work and responsibilities have been altered during this season, there are some of you who have experienced job loss or pay cuts, or a temporary furlough. And if that is the case, we, we want to say sorry that that is what you're walking through right now, but we encourage you, please let someone know your sanctuary body wants to come alongside of you and share that burden with you. And if you are hearing this and you're someone who is, um, has means right now to help us accomplish that goal, would you prayerfully consider contributing to the Benevolence Fund that Sanctuary is using to help meet practical and tangible needs of families in this season? Others of you are essential workers. You are still continuing to go into your job and work your job in a similar way that you did prior to COVID-19. My wife is an essential worker herself, and so she heads into the hospital two to three days a week, continuing to carry out her job. And I have seen firsthand the turmoil that being an essential worker can cause someone to have because you know that when you go to work, you are only raising your chance and the probability of you being exposed to COVID-19. 
what for her it has caused her to think about and question how much do I really love and value my job? And on the flip side, it's caused her to ask the question, how much does my job and my work really value me based on the guidelines they're implementing and the PPE that they're providing and other things like that? There are those of us whose our primary job is actually not a vocation that necessarily we receive a paycheck for or the IRS taxes us for, but rather uh, our, our, our primary job is being a student or you know being a parent. And as a student, you're trying to figure out how to finish school and accomplish school through packets that you're picking up from your school or your online work that you're completing to finish the semester. And for those of us who are parents who are not homeschool parents, you're now becoming the primary educator for your children. Jackie Hill Perry, a author and artist, uh, posted on Instagram about the struggle of now trying to educate her children, being the primary educator. And she concluded that post with two hashtags. The first being, hashtag, you've anointed me for many things. But she follows that hashtag with hashtag parenting in a pandemic ain't one. Maybe you can relate as you're trying to navigate and figure out what it looks like to parent and educate, be the teacher for your kids. Then there are those of us who are working from home. You've continued your job. You've had to adapt things to be pretty much fully based on your computer or your phone taking calls online, doing work uh, through your computer. And, and that's, that's the camp that I find myself in. I work for Young Life and we're a Christian outreach with the mission of introducing adolescents to Jesus Christ and helping them grow in their faith. And in this season, I've continued to work through lots of Zoom calls and other things like that. And so when Naomi heads to the hospital, I'm home with my boy Samuel and the challenge of working for Young Life in this season. And don't get me wrong, it's not all hard, it's not all difficult, it hasn't all been challenged. I've had the awesome privilege and blessing of getting more time with my son in this season. I get to spend my days with him when pre-COVID-19 I would be out and about going from meeting to meeting. But it does have its unique challenges. I'm on Zoom calls trying to hold or feed my son. I'm scheduling calls, you know, for when he's down for his nap so I can be fully present with the people I'm engaging with. I'm trying to lower my expectations so that I understand and am gracious to myself with the fact that I am not as productive and efficient as I was prior to COVID-19. And so, with these challenges, what I'm walking through in this unique season, what this experience has shown me is actually something that Pastor Rich mentioned a few weeks back. He said something along the lines of, we are trying not to get exposed to COVID-19, but COVID-19 is exposing us. As my norms have been disrupted, my responsibilities as a father heightened, my ability to do my work well has lowered, I have seen and experienced that I am desiring to feel worth, value, love, acceptance, and reputation through my job and the success in which I carry out my job. And this is a desire that I believe that I had you know, given over to God in years past. But COVID-19 has exposed that it is still present within me. So what makes it so hard to live from a secure identity? Because that's the script that Ephesians 2.10 tells us that our, our work flows from the fact that we are a work of God. But I have been operating and living in a way that is opposite. I have been hoping and working in the hopes that my work would produce or provide an identity. It would prove that I should be considered a work of God. Why is it so difficult to have our work flow from our identity of being a work of God? Paul says in verses 1 through 3 that there is a 
course of this world, a course of this world that has been uh, set in place by Satan himself. And what Satan is doing is that he is playing into, he's leveraging, he's using the desires and the sinful longings of our hearts as people to create this course. And those sinful desires and longings are things like greed, pride, comfort, and selfishness. And he created a course that produces a narrative, a narrative that tells us you are what you do. And no matter which category of the types of worker you identified with most, when I said earlier, no matter what category you find yourself in, the narrative that the course of this world is telling you is that you are what you do. We are taught to believe that our work proves whether or not we are considered to be worthy of the title, a work of God, by both people and by God. Think of it this way. If you've ever been uh, in the ocean, what happens is you get in the water and whether you can feel or not, there is a current present. And when you're in the water, you can be in there for a long time and you don't necessarily notice the current. But when you look back to the shore, you see just how far that current has brought you down beach. And you look and you see, I am not where I was when I first entered the water. The course of the world works very similarly. The course of the world is constantly pulling us away from finding our identity in God and constantly pulling us back to the ways we found our identity prior to our relationship with Jesus. The course of this world is constantly pulling us towards finding our identity in the things that we do and what we can accomplish, the titles and the roles and responsibilities we have earned. But what does God think of this narrative? The text points out that God is rich in, in mercy and in love. So how does this narrative that the world produces intersect with love and mercy? In the letter to the Romans, Paul tells us that God demonstrated his love to us through Jesus Christ's death on a cross. He says it this way in Romans 5. You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, Paul is dispelling the notion that we in any way, shape, or form have worked to earn Jesus' death on the cross. In fact, what he's saying is that our work, which is rooted in our uh, self-centeredness, it's rooted in our confidence that, for, that we can save ourselves and not rooted in trusting in God, actually produces a current that pulls us away from connection with God. It separates us from God. And so you might hear uh, verses like Romans 5 and you might say, wow, that's really powerful that Jesus loves me and that he was willing to die for me. But, but surely there still has to be a way for me to work myself into a work of God. But as much as our pride wants this to be the reality, the, the Bible is so clear, the scriptures are so clear that that is not the case. Verse 6 in Romans 5 tells us that we were powerless to do anything. And back in Ephesians 2, it says that we were actually dead in our trespasses and sins. And so we don't have the spiritual life or the spiritual power apart from Jesus to do anything. And so as spiritually dead people, the only hope we have is that the one who resurrected physically, Jesus Christ, would resurrect us spiritually our hope is that Jesus would resurrect us to new life, bring us back to life, and a new identity 
an identity not built on the things that we can do or accomplish, but rather an identity built on the person and the work of Jesus Christ that he accomplished. You see, God's mercy is demonstrated in the fact that Jesus Christ did the thing that we most needed but could not accomplish ourselves. As Pastor Rich preached on Easter Sunday, that when we look back to the resurrection, uh, we will be surprised by hope. That when we look back on the resurrection, we're surprised by a hope that Jesus Christ raised us up with him. And that we're seated with Christ in heaven, meaning this. Our hope is that God would look on us and value us and treat us and adopt us as beloved sons and daughters. And with this new identity of being a beloved son or daughter, we are also given a new purpose. Verse 10 in Ephesians 2 says that this purpose is to walk in or to live a life of good works. Why? What is so significant about a life of good works? Jesus answers this question himself in Matthew 5. He says, you are any believer, any follower of him is a light of the world. A city on a hill can cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. A life of good works lived out for God point other people to God, not ourselves. So how do we live this life of good works as someone who is a work of God? How do we live this life of good works and let it flow from our identity as a work of God, no matter what our responsibilities are or what our job is? How do we carry out our responsibility to make disciples, whether we are navigating COVID-19 or not? In Young Life, what we've been saying in response to this question is, we've adapted the how We do things, but our why remains the same. It all flows from our identity of being a work of God and the need for people to know they are loved by him. So the first way in which we work as a work of God is actually by resting. Yeah, we we, we simply rest in Jesus' work on our behalf. In the creation narrative back in Genesis 1, we're told that God creates Adam and Eve and he gives them this charge, this responsibility to work the garden. But they don't start working in the garden the next day. Actually, before they start their work, there is a day of rest, a Sabbath. And what they simply did on that day of rest is they enjoyed the work God had done on their behalf. They simply enjoyed God and they enjoyed one another. And that same call is true for us today. We are to create rhythms and practices in our lives that help us to enjoy God and remember that what Jesus did for us on the cross. And this rest, it it doesn't have to just be limited to spiritual disciplines such as prayer and reading the scripture, though those are important. It can include things like physically resting, getting good sleep. Psalm 127 too says that God gives to his beloved sleep. And what God is saying to us there is that if we're too anxious or too worried about the things of our life or the course of this world to get good sleep, it's a sign that we're not resting in his work. We're not resting and trusting him. Another way that we can rest in the work of Christ is by having Uh, consistent practices and rhythms of exercise and play. When we use our bodies and, and we have fun and we enjoy creation, we get outside, what we're doing is we are actually worshiping God. We are saying, God, thank you for my body. God, thank you for the beautiful creation that you have entrusted to us. Another really practical way that I think is really vital in this season that we can rest 
in the work of Jesus is by detoxing from technology and detoxing from the, the, the news and the work that the government and everyone else is doing right now to address COVID-19. We can abstain from our phones. We can abstain from letting ourselves be inundated by the new word on the street today. And we can rest in the, the word and work of God. I know for myself that when I'm trying my best to keep up to date with every little new thing that's happening in this season, all it does is it causes me to start living and thinking and working according to the course of this world, not according to Christ. And one last practical for how we can work as a work of God is that we remain in the present. We can't miss, we don't want to miss how God is inviting us to uh, shine our light, to live out good works today because we're thinking about or worrying about how we're going to live out our good works or what works God has prepared for, for us tomorrow. God wants to work through you in your current situation. No matter how things have changed for you and your family and those around you, and no matter how little impact you may feel you can have right now. You see, we talk with our students who are involved with Young Life, our students that we're discipling, we call them campaigners. We cast a vision to our campaigners and, and share with them, hey, because you're fully immersed in your community, because you're a student, you're at the school every day, you have peers that you're with every day, you have teachers and administrators and coaches and your families that you're with every day, you have a unique and powerful ability to be an agent of kingdom impact right where you are. And so uh, because you're fully immersed, you can have powerful kingdom impact. And so my question to each and every one of us is this, where does God have you fully immersed? And do you believe that you have the opportunity for significant kingdom impact in that place? So to close our time, I want to end with a few reflection questions that we can talk about with those that you're listening to the sermon with or your community group throughout the week or with those that you've been connecting with, your friends that you've been connecting with throughout the week. And these questions are this. In what ways are you finding your identity in your work or responsibilities? Secondly, how can you allow yourself to be defined by Jesus' work? What are the practical ways that you can rest in the work of Christ and remind yourself of your belovedness? And lastly, what good works is God calling you to walk in today? Thank you for the opportunity to share, Sanctuary. It's been a privilege. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you did what we needed most but couldn't accomplish ourselves. Thank you that the work of Christ is what defines us. God, I pray that each and every one of us who is hearing this message would allow ourselves to be identified with you, that we would allow our identity as a work of God to impact any and all work or responsibilities we have. God, thank you for the gift of your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that brings it alive in our hearts. And we pray, Lord God, that we would be transformed to be more like your son, Jesus. It is in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Have a great day, Sanctuary. Wow, what a powerful word, Andrew. Thank you so much, brother. Um, I'm standing in our prayer room right now, and I just want to ask if anyone has a prayer request or even a praise report uh, to please email prayer at sanctuarycolumbus.com or go online and fill out our digital connection card so that we can pray for you, come alongside you to take your next step in faith and maybe even with Sanctuary Columbus Church. Y'all, I, I need y'all to know something. Um, y'all are spoiled with good preaching here at Sanctuary. That was Andrew's first time preaching at Sanctuary Columbus Church. Obviously not his first time, but he brought a powerful and strong message that I'm so convicted by, honestly. Uh, God's got some more work to do in me as I give my work back 
uh, to the Lord. In fact, I want to ask if you would pray for me and Shala this week. We're getting away for a few days. We had this in our plans and uh, we're planning on keeping it. Yes, we are. Um, and I have not had a Sabbath since COVID-19 started. Shh, don't tell nobody. Um, but I just told you. So there's that. <laughs> uh, just pray for us that we can get some good rest and to be obedient to the Lord. So I told y'all that word was convicting to me. And then the week before that, we had Micah Morgan who came up after Easter and gave us a strong message as well. We are spoiled with good preaching. Y'all should give thanks to God for the good preaching that takes place here at Sanctuary Columbus Church. I also want to offer this step to you to consider as you're looking at those reflection questions that Andrew mentioned this week. We want to come alongside one of our local mission partners, Chloe, to partner with her to connect with the 20 women um, who are single mothers. Uh, these are women and mothers that Chloe uh, mentors and comes alongside to help them mature as parents in their parenting role and process. Uh, of these 20 women, we want to provide 20 gift bags. Uh, these gift bags will provide some immediate resources, something to let them know that someone is thinking about them, something that they can practically use right now that would be a blessing to them amidst a season where they too are affected by COVID-19. And so um, we have some uh, practical uh, steps for you uh, this week. Uh, one is to consider maybe providing the contents for that gift bag. Uh, these would be things like um, hygiene products and um, diapers and uh, maybe even a gift card to a grocery store or a gas station. Um, and then the second uh, option is maybe to consider, uh, if you can't do a, a full box or a full bag, uh, to just buy a few items and then drop them off here at the church so that we can put those bags together. And then the third is to consider being a deliverer for one or two of these gifts. Uh, we want to physically take them uh, to, the, to the homes, to the moms, uh, drop them off uh, at their door, um, and let them know that we are thinking about them. I'm not asking you to sit in their home, I'm not asking you to visit with them, I'm not asking you not to use a mask or anything like that but we wanna practically provide this gift of care. So if that's you, we want you to go to the digital connect card on our website as well. Let us know that you're interested in serving. We'll get right back to you um, with some practical steps of how we're gonna do that together. God bless your church and we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that message this week. Remember Sanctuary Family, continue to connect with us on social media during the week using the handle at Sanctuary Seabus. Now that's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And this week, please remember to also pray for those non-medical essential workers who continue to work to provide the things that we need during these difficult times. So thank you again for joining us this week. Take care, Sanctuary family, and continue your social distancing, and we look forward to seeing you again. Mm -hmm.